analytics is all the rage these days. We know that, but you know what might be even more popular right now? Online learning. And add those two things together, analytics and online learning, and kaboom, you get everyone and their Aunt Karen's Pomeranian out here taking courses online, trying to learn analytics. And guess what? It's awesome. There's so much great content being created, so many great options to choose from. I mean, come on, Google is out here doing it. So yeah, we've got options. And in this video, I'm gonna share my five tips for learning analytics online right now. You just gotta analyze stuff. Hey everybody, Matt Bratton here with tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters. And we're jumping right in with tip number one. So this may sound obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway because it's incredibly important. You gotta have a goal. That's right. I'm gonna harken back to my seven steps to land an interview video here and say it again. If you don't know where you're headed, any road will take you there. This is true, and if you don't have a goal in mind, you're gonna be missing out on a huge part of the learning experience, which is your why. Why are you doing this? If you aren't clear on your why, then your likelihood of success in completing a course is gonna dwindle as your motivation starts to cool off and suddenly, I, the latest TikTok dance craze is gonna steal your attention away and you just may never circle back to the course, right? Look, it doesn't have to be hard, but I know in the day and age when it seems like everybody's posting all these fancy accolades and certificates and whatnot all over social media, you feel the need to just accomplish something. Resist, be calculated, be intentional. If you have a goal to become a senior analyst, for example, and you see certain skills that just seem to be tickets to ride for a role like that, then make a plan to start developing those skills. And if online courses are gonna be the means for you to do so, then make sure those are gonna to contribute to you working towards your goals. This is gonna increase your likelihood of success in the course by keeping you motivated and focused on your why. Got it? Good, because we're already on tip number two. So. Tip number two, now it's time for you to get real with yourself and be realistic. If you set a goal for yourself to go from high school dropout to data scientist in six months via a couple of Udemy courses, you might wanna check yourself, slow your roll a little bit, okay? Cause look, I get it. You're awesome, you're dedicated, you're hardworking, yada, 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 that's great. But setting crazy goals like this when you're already probably working full-time job, trying to squeeze in studying on the side, it's a great way to get discouraged as you're just setting yourself up for failure. Maybe I'm underestimating you, and if so, then you probably don't need my help. But for most normal humans, weaving in extracurricular educational pursuits can be weighty on your schedule. And in order to avoid burnout, you gotta make sure you pace yourself and keep those goals as realistic as you can manage. And if this means like zooming in and creating smaller, more manageable mini objectives, then great. Do that. Start racking up small wins and as you move towards your larger overall goal. Rome wasn't built in a day, that's what they say, right? So if you're not enjoying the journey and you get so mentally tied up and focused on the goal, you're really just doing yourself a disservice and you can grossly enhance the learning experience if you can reduce the pressure that you put on yourself by just being realistic. All right, so now you have a goal in mind, you're being realistic about what you hope to achieve. Now it's time to start scooping up all those sweet courses you see everybody posting about because they're all on sale, right? Better buy now. You know, there's a term in Japanese called sundoku, which translates roughly into one who piles up books but doesn't read them. You know what this is, right? A lot of people are guilty of this these days, especially in the age of low cost and even not so low cost courses with you can pick these up with just a few clicks of a mouse, right? And suddenly, even without opening the syllabus, you just feel immediately smarter and more accomplished, right? If nothing by the simple idea that you could learn this new thing now that you're enrolled in a course on it, right? Look, I'd be lying if I said I'd never gone on a Udemy buying spree, but you know what happened next? I'll tell you what didn't happen next, I didn't dive in and finish all those courses. No, I've still got dozens of registrations to courses I have yet to even start. There's actually industry data that backs up this sort of thing where there's fields of study where the average online course completion rate is as low as 3%. 3%. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, sure, but I suspect the biggest is related to this Sundoku and the idea that people are more attracted to the idea of learning than actually learning. So where is tip three in all this mess? 
To the best of your ability, take your courses one at a time. Just like any journey starts with a single step, so too will your educational journey on your path to achieving your goals. So even if you have solid realistic goals, the next surest way to feel overwhelmed or frustrated is to start on several courses all at once. And then suddenly you're gonna start feeling like you're, you're treading water or you're not really sure where to focus your mental energy and you're gonna burn out. This isn't like school where education was effectively your full-time job. And by the way, shout out to anybody who also held down a full-time job while in school. That's not easy, but no. Likely you're doing this and it's gonna be on the side. So pick your course and go all in on it. And don't let other courses or shiny objects distract you from the prize of completing it. Also, fun fact if you didn't know already, courses on Udemy are almost always on sale. And even other platforms and course creators are regularly gonna have very decent discounts offered for people who get on their newsletters. And by the way, quick plug, I'm still working on a lot of content for my courses, but I have a free foundations mini course that's available on my website at tmbanalytics.com slash free training. Link, <laughs> link in the comments. But if you sign up for that, you can get on my mailing list. And the only reason that I would ever email you is to share new courses when they go live and to offer discounts to courses that exist. So case in point. All right, let's move on to tip number four. This one might be a bit trickier, but I think you're gonna understand the value real quick. And that is, you have to reinforce your learning. What this means is when you're taking online courses, you're doing it at your own pace. And most people just muscle through content, right? You're going fast. And while that's cool, the issue here is that it rarely sticks. In fact, there's an analysis called the Ebbing House's Forgetting Curve that has been reproven many times over. And it shows that there's a logarithmic curve in how much we forget over time after learning something without reinforcement. So that course you just wrapped up six days ago, 75% could be a distant memory if you don't reinforce what you learned. So how will you do this? There's a lot of dependencies naturally, depending on the subject matter, but suffice to say that if it's practical in nature, then that means that you should practice it, right? And so a lot of analytics courses are like that. And if you're in a job where you can find data sets to tinker with, do it. Also talk about what you're studying with others. I mean, hell, even make a post on LinkedIn about what you found and ask others to discuss it with you. Simple things like that also promote a level of, of accountability. And if you let others know that you're studying something and they wanna help you out, you should let them. Talk about what you're studying, ask questions. Anything to help reinforce the lessons and just make sure that it's not wasted effort for something that you just turn around and forget tomorrow. All right, now finally, tip number five, here we are. This one I actually debated including, but I think it's important to put out here. I hereby give you permission to quit. No, seriously, if you're struggling with a course because you just don't jive with the teaching style or maybe you feel it's too basic or even too advanced, whatever the case may be, don't suffer through the course just to say you did it. Cut your losses and find a course that's a better fit. I know this can be hard. Psychologically, sometimes we feel that you know we've already invested time or money or energy into something and therefore we have to finish it because you ain't no quitter, right? Look. We've only got so much time on this earth. Make sure you're using that time wisely. Education is one of those places where you should be picky too, right? So don't feed your brain something that's not going to give you what you need. If you know that like deep down this course is a bad fit for you, just cut your losses. Just cut your losses early, move on to something else, and you're going to be glad that you did in no time because you'll be getting whatever it was that you were missing. How about you? Do you have tips for learning analytics online? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. So also, if you like this video, I invite you to give me a thumbs up. And if you're serious about getting in, moving up in the field of analytics, you can take your first step right now by subscribing to my channel where I drop new content weekly on all things analytics careers. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.